Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we have quite the long awaited things. I mean, I ordered these back in like what, February? And they finally come in stock. Now I bought two of these, one in the color I wanted and then one in the color that everybody else wanted, you know, for the memes, for the lulls of the internet. <laughs> And as you can tell by the title of this, this is the Ibanez Pia. Basically Steve Vai's next signature guitar because the gem, super popular, right? So I believe it was Winter Nam 2019. It kind of gets confusing because we haven't had a Nam in such a long time due to all the shutdowns. They introduced these things and they had them in four different colors. Stallion White has been out for almost a year now. And that thing just kind of looks like a regular gem. I wasn't really too impressed with that particular finish. But then they had three limited edition colors. The internet's favorite panther pink, which is just a completely out there color. You have to be a very, very good guitar player to pull that one off. And then they also had an envy green, which I thought was pretty cool. And then a sundew gold. A fun story, I actually tried to get Steve Vai to do the intro of this episode. He's actually on that Canva website where you can actually pay them to tell you a little thing. Unfortunately, he was unable to get back to me in time though. But hey, if you want a Christmas gift of Steve Vai talking to you, that is available. I'll leave a link in the description. No hard feelings there, but hey, take a look at this case. It this reminds me of crop circles or something, the design that they've got on here. I really do not do many Ibanez, let alone expensive three and a half thousand dollar Ibanez, but they do make some pretty nice guitars. And the company has a really, really rich history. You can check out some of my other videos if you're interested in learning that. But let's go ahead and open this three latched case and see what color I got. Yes, it's the one that I wanted, the Envy Green finish. So what kind of makes this one special is two of the finishes got black pick guards and appointments, whereas the other two, they ended up getting white. So the other one is one of the white versions. So I think that kind of tells you what one we'll be unboxing next. But first impressions of this thing, green finish. A little bit metallic, so it's got some sparkle. I think that works great. We get those new Utopia pickups. I've actually already had a set of the Utopias though because that bucket head that I got, that just happened to have those in there. So if you happen to like the way that these things sound, you are able to buy those things separately. You get these nice bejeweled knobs. They've got some, uh, what looks like abalone to me. Just a master volume, master tone. Those turn nicely. And then we've got this new design. So Vi with the gems always had that monkey grip here, which is like what made the entire guitar so iconic, right? So they changed it up this time with some flower petals that also kind of looks like the yin yang. Now, honestly, it's a little bit too hard for me to get all four fingers in there. I mean, you can still do it, don't get me wrong, but that's more like a, a petal grip. I don't know, I think I like the monkey grip better, but aesthetically, this is definitely a lot more pleasing. And then we get all these fancy inlays that we'll take a closer look at on the workbench. And then we even get uh, the last four frets are scalloped right there. That's cool. And if you don't know what a scallop is, it's when you actually round out the fretboard at the bottom there. Like you actually remove wood. You can kind of see what I'm talking about there. It's supposed to get the fretboard material out of your way so you can play faster. And you can do some pretty insane bends. So this is kind of a partially scalloped, but not all the way. Because you can do the whole neck if you want to, but then tuning stability not always the best. Not because of the tuners or anything, it's because you have a heavy hand. But neck profile, it's kind of like a, a D shape. It's got some shoulders here, but a very flat back. I think they call these some sort of a wizard. I'll get all that stuff for on the workbench segment. But yeah, first impressions. It's kind of cool. Multi-piece neck, made in Japan, Ibanez. Oh, and I think you can just do this, can't you? Yep, it's all on a magnet. That's pretty cool. I don't even think you have to worry about putting that on the wrong way. Or maybe you do. You would have thought they would have printed that so it would have been the same either direction. So I guess if it happens to be catching your belt buckle or something, you can move it to whatever position makes you happy. But up here, we even have that little Pia flower and our really sparkly Ibanez logo there. So there we have it, the Ibanez Pia. The limited edition colors are finally out. And I've got to say, this case, 
it's really nice on the inside. I wasn't thinking much from the outside. I mean, this is just like generic cheapy case and feel, except for all the texture to it. But then once you get in here, you get a whole bunch of stuff. You get the Ibanez multi-tool. Those things are nice. It looks like we get two different style trem bars. I'll check that out real quick. It looks like one has kind of a... It's not really padded, but it has like a slightly textured feel to it. It's definitely a lot lighter in weight, whereas this is a solid bar. Hear that? It looks like we get all the uh, tools that we need for that as well. A little bit of setup literature. Japanese manuals are always a lot of fun to look at. And a little Pia insert here that shows you the flower that this is inspired off of. Paradise in art. Cool. And now for the other one that the internet wanted to see. The legendary Panther Pink. I was originally just going to do the green one because that's the one I preferred, but then all other YouTubers are starting to talk about Panther Pink and <laughs> yeah, that actually looks really good. I don't quite have the guitar skills to wield this axe on stage, but yes, that. You know, I've got to say, in person, I might even like it better than the green one because it has this perloid material for the pickguard, which I actually think the white one does this guitar a little bit more justice, but maybe just comes down to the particular finish. But the other thing that you might not notice is, you know, the pickup color itself is different. You got a little bit of pink in there. I mean, this still has the scalloping and the fancy Ibanez logo. Everything else is the same. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't do like a black perloid material for this one. I really think it's that perloid stuff that makes this one look just a little bit better. It's got a little bit more of a wow factor. And this guy has the black pickups. Maybe it would have looked better and popped more if it would have had green. Well, here you go, side by side. And something else that I'm noticing is, you know, the jewel toppers on here, completely pink matching the finish. Whereas this one, it's more of that abalone material. Yes, it's kind of green, but it's not completely bejeweled green, so. <laughs> Yes, this is pretty cool. So as far as the workbench demo, we'll go ahead and tear apart the green one. And then for the playing demo, we'll rock Panther Pink because green does not play well with green screen. Or I guess at the same time, it does play well. We can make this one whatever color we want. All right, let's go ahead and learn about the specs. Inside the Pia, here's what we got going on here. Underneath the pick guard, it's just completely shielded off. It's routed for an HSH setup. So as far as changing out pickups, I mean, you could put single coils in here if you really wanted to and change out your pick guard, but nothing really that fancy to look at underneath our pick guard. I will say that the routes look nice and clean. I don't see any splintering or anything. They almost look too perfect. So the way that this thing works is it actually comes down on a shelf right here. So it's completely sculpted in right there. So it creates a little bit of a ridge and then that comes in here. So it's a nice little symmetry line and then you start to get your petal cut out. And yes, they do put finish in here. They don't cheap out on you or anything. Looks like we get a little bit of a polishing compound there yet. There we go. Now it's all better in that location at least. But just kind of a cool design in general. I like it anyways. Maybe not as functional as the monkey grip for reasons that we've already talked about. But it's kind of cool to see them evolve the gem. And now, as far as the pickups themselves, as we were talking about on the unboxing segment, you've got the new DiMarzio Utopia pickups. You know, Utopia, you know, playing off of the Pia instrument. And you've got a neck pickup and a bridge pickup that are that, as well as the single coil in the middle. You can actually buy these on DiMarzio's website. They're 150 bucks a pop for these and $80 for the single coil. You can also get one that doesn't have the fancy laser etched pickup covers over them that make it look quite elegant. I think then they're like 110 bucks for the humbuckers and like $60 for the single coil. But these guys are ceramic pickups, whereas this is an Alnico pickup. And the switching system for this is rather unique, you know, coming from a guy who mainly only talks about Gibson and Fenders. So your neck position is just your neck you get your middle position, which is just your middle, your bridge, bridge pickup. But it's not like the Stratocaster in the in-between positions. You actually split the coil of the neck pickup and you blend it in with this one. So I'll be curious to see how that sounds in this particular guitar, but that does it for each of them. Ibanez even has this nice little diagram that shows you what I'm talking about here. But I was actually really surprised when I took this thing apart to find a push-pull pot system. So I initially thought, okay, so are we splitting? No, this is actually a high-pass filter when you need it. 
So that's something you got going on here with the gold and knurled knobs. Here's an up close look at that abalone topper here. Definitely some super fancy looking knobs here. Heck, I'm surprised they didn't give us some sort of a fancy metal switch tip. As far as the electronics go, it's completely shielded off on the back, so you're good to go there. But I was kind of surprised to see a tiny little pot down there. I believe it says 500k ohms on that. And the pickguard itself kind of feels a little bit flimsy, to be honest. It's just single ply. I'm used to multiply stuff. And I guess this is a pretty pointy pickguard, so there's some areas that are weaker than others. I found it fascinating that they actually just cut the pickguard completely out of the way here because the neck just goes, sits up right against that neck pickup right there. I mean, you can still see the neck right there, even in the pocket. We'll take a quick look at the edge trim here. I really don't know what I'm doing with this thing. I mean, if you're looking for a fanciful playing demo using this tremolo system, yeah, this is not the video for you. <laughs> just kind of taking a look at it. I'll try to use it a little bit, but I believe they call this the claw. It's kind of a little sculpting thing out. That way you can actually use these whatever way you need to. And I just wanted to compare these bars here side by side on the workbench. So I was correct in saying that this thing was super lightweight. They call this the ultra light trem bar. And then this one's just kind of your regular style. It's nice that they give you both. I mean, to give you an idea here, a regular one weighs about one and a half ounces. Whereas this thing, it weighs just a little bit more than half an ounce. So one ounce might not seem like a lot, but when it comes to controlling a trim, I guess it would make sense. And this is actually a lot bulkier in feel too. So maybe it comes down to that for you as well. But now you might be saying, okay, let's get some DC resistance readings on our pickups. Um, wh wh where do we plug this guitar in? This is the first truly wireless guitar. You don't have, I'm just kidding. It's, <laughs> it's over here. That way you can kind of tie it in with your strap. I mean, this is a high performance guitar. So we can just plug it in like this, I guess. Cool. So our neck pickup reads 12.25K ohms. Bridge position a little bit hotter at 13. Just the middle pickup, 12.79. And now this coil and this coil, 3.86ish. And these two coils at 4.6. And now moving on from the alder body, we do have a rosewood neck on here. Again, you get the scalloping phenomenon right there. Here's an up close look at that. But these are 24 jumbo stainless steel frets. I believe I've had stainless steel on at least one other guitar. Maybe it was that Shiji. I forget how you pronounce that thing. And a lot of people say stainless steel sounds different, but it's supposed to last theoretically forever at least your lifetime anyways i mean unless you're really hammering away on this every single day but they call this whole vine inlay pattern the pia blossom inlay so what you've got is kind of like a combination of a perloid and like an abalone material the website didn't really say one way or the other what this stuff is i mean this doesn't look like real mother of pearl to me but this stuff definitely looks like real abalone but i could be wrong on that there is a little bit of pearlescence on some of this stuff so kind of cool, fancy flower things going up here. And on the edge, not only do you get these cool little side marker inlays, but they're glow in the dark. They call them loom inlays, you know, illuminating inlays. Here's my best attempt at showing you how they glow a little bit. This whole guitar looks pretty cool in the dark. Especially when it's just low light situations. Now all that color starts to come off. Like this fretboard just needs a couple of like diamonds in it or something to make it extra sparkly. That's actually pretty cool in these low light situations. Especially that headstock. As far as neck specs, about 1.71 inches at the nut width. And by the 12th, 2.07. First fret neck depth, 0.77. And by the 12th, 0.83. I mean, super thin feeling neck on the back. It's still got the shoulders on the edges, but completely flat on the back there. Then this just has a regular gold locking nut system. You can see the other pieces right there. You get some sort of a string tree right here. And if you take the truss rod cover off, here's what you have to adjust with. And the headstock is matching. It says Ibanez in that color changing material. And you get this little check mark. And then as I was telling you in the unboxing, that's both the Pia flower with petals, but, but it also spells out Pia. You see it? P-I-A. That's a really cool design choice right there. And as far as the tuners go, they're Goto in style. They're not locking because you don't need them to be locking because it locks down here. So far, I can't really say I saw anything that I viewed as inferior quality control. 
However, maybe it's just because I'm not used to Ibanez's, this doesn't necessarily feel like an ultra high-end guitar. But it does feel like a very high-performance instrument, that's for sure. I mean, even this trem system, it seems to make sense for the most part. I mean, just using the fine tuners, it doesn't feel like they're grinding against each other. They're really easy to turn. It doesn't even look like the fine tuners will come out. Like, if they're at the end of their tread, they're at the end of the tread, so you're not going to accidentally lose them. And that's under string tension. I mean, that's the one thing I hate about Floyd sometimes, is they're, like, so hard to move. So that is fantastic. It feels nice to use. And even though I haven't like perfectly tuned this up, it seems to come back within pitch. So bolt on neck construction, not neck through or anything. And again, we can uh, take a look back here just by removing that plate. I believe this is like the magnet strip right here. But here's what this thing looks like. And yes, a magnet does stick to that. In stock from the factory, you get three springs. This thing appears to be a fingerprint magnet, though. But this, does it mean it's active pickups? Is this where the 9-volt battery goes? Nope. That's just how you access your jack if you need to replace it or make some adjustments. So I guess that makes perfect sense. And here's what the backside of this looks like. They just cut one out like that, and it all looks fancy. And then the neck itself. This is where I feel that it just gets so boring. This feels like just any generic standard type neck. You get three pieces of maple, just really plain grain, and then two very tiny stripes of walnut here with a volute, and they install your locking nut by drilling through there for some reason. And then here's our serial number, 2018669. -6 but there's the Godot brandings here. As far as the stock strap buttons, they're the large gold style, and they've got white felt around them. So all said and done, a very fine guitar. I mean, the action on this is just ridiculous. I mean, look at that. It's pretty much touching the frets. And yet I don't get any like major buzzes. I mean, if you want a super high performance guitar, uh, yeah, I can see why people enjoy the gems. And now this prettier version. But this thing weighs seven pounds, 12.6 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug one of these in and hear how it sounds. All right, starting with our neck pickup. Bear with me on the tuning. I did the best I could. Neck split with middle. Sounds like an angry strat mixed with a piezo. Now let's just see how just the middle pickup sounds. Now we'll hit the middle and the bridge split. Kind of like a really thin Stratocaster, I guess you could say. just our bridge pickup. Now I know 
know, most people who play these guitars, they're doing shreddery bits, arpeggios, sweet picking, all that other good stuff. So hopefully this video gives you something a little bit different from everyone else. But yeah, it's a pretty versatile guitar. <laughs> However, for me, I think it's the neck split with the middle that's the most unique to this guitar. But now let's go ahead and throw some distortion in here, see how it sounds. Okay, so clearly this is not the style of guitar I'm used to playing. I can hear all the tones and the sounds that Vi has been using. That sounds fantastic. It's just, yeah, I'm not quite up there. Yeah, I'm, I, don't, I don't really have a use for such a high performance guitar, but it looks quite beautiful and I hope you guys enjoy checking it out. A few things I do want to make mention of is the output jack on this thing goes crazy. I think it might actually be my cable. It doesn't like going in at this angle. Like it keeps cutting in and out. That's kind of annoying. The trem system itself, I like it. It keeps your bar in place, but yet it's not too firm. It's easy to use. However, uh, I'm not really good with trem, so I just blocked it off with a piece of foam back here to kind of limit the movement. That way I could keep it in tune the best that I could. With the action being so ridiculously low, these pickups really feel like they're in my way. So if you're one of those guys that doesn't like middle pickups on Les Pauls or anything, you probably won't like this feel. But for the type of music that this is meant for, I mean, you've got nice little picking patterns right here. You could lower the pickups. You could also raise your action. But I do want to comment on the scalloping up here. You really do not understand just how much your fingers drag against a fretboard until you play scallops. So normally when I try to do bends up here, they don't do much for me. But with this thing, it's like, it's so easy to do the vibrato and get all the way up there. Probably the best thing about this whole design. You don't need like a comfort carve heel here because the whole natural design of it, I mean, you can get everywhere. I mean, they could probably put more frets all the way up here. That's just how much room you got. So it's a very comfortable guitar in that aspect. So even though it's not necessarily my style of guitar, it was a lot of fun to check out. It's not every day you get a super fancy Steve Vai here. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the Ibanez Pia with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.